Hey, it's your buddy Will Crockett here, and I am so excited to share with you the samples from our composition They're program. creepy and they're kooky, mysterious <laughs> and spooky. We had they're all together kooky. <laughs> Ookie. The ookies. We had <laughs> such a terrific time talking about tips for making better composition with the lovely and talented Tracy Rosinski and of course the massively talented Mark Hauser. Take a look at some of this, <laughs> this info here. This is one of the best programs that we've ever done on Friday Photo School. So Tracy, tell us what negative space is and how you work with it, will you? Um, I, it's kind of something that I just subconsciously do. It's not something that I over overthought. I, mean, I was working with, with this specifically color and shape and I see different lines and textures and I, I kind of just let, let the frame breathe a little bit. Um, and some, sometimes when I am doing things with negative space, there's reasons for it. Need that be if it's an editorial, if it's a double track and there needs to be a cut line or if there needs to be like the next one that Will has, um, if it needed um, a room for a header for a title for uh, the cover of a magazine, then I love space like that. However, I did push the, the frame, the subject down in the frame. Um, this one, I just, I love the lines. I mean, it was the shapes that, that were talking to me, and they mimic, mimicked the shapes in the clothing at the same time. Uh, this was something, it was just kind of, you know, her being in the space and identifying and working within the space. I uh, just love this shot. You do, don't you? I love this shot, too. Here, it's this, this very simple, too. Mark loves it because it's great looking that way. He thinks it's fun that way. <laughs> For whatever reason, Mark thinks it's great that way. And yeah. he actually likes it like this, too. Yeah, he's got the same corner. Just lit differently. Just the mm -hmm. more color card. Yeah. But They're these lines the bring you back into the main focal point, which right, brings right. you the white and the color and the shapes bring you back up yeah. to, to the subject. And the, the composition of those two, those are, those are great example images too. Mm -hmm. If you crop them, you would ruin them. Completely ruin them. Yeah. I think. The extra space that they need is terrific. Yeah. And of course, we've all had jobs where we shoot and we have this wonderful composition and the client sees it and then crops the heck out of it, mm -hmm. completely destroys we the composition. We like this uh, from, uh, <laughs> right over there, Mark. You know, I love that. Hey, you know, this is a good head shot. <laughs> we'll just use the head and we'll blow it up. Well, you know, also, too, I get questions from uh, early photographers, junior photographers, that say, well, you know, I need to have a 21 megapixel camera and the best possible lens because what if I shoot a group shot and then the customer asks for a head shot from that one person of 12? Well, I tell them, <laughs> you know, you're not going to get really good results doing that anyway, and that has never happened in my career. Has it ever happened to you? No. I've never heard Trace? that. No, not crop into that, Cameras. no. <laughs> but with me today are a couple of photographers who took a completely different path to developing kind of a fluid motion to their composition. And I'd like to discuss that with you. To my right, your left, is the lovely and talented Tracy Rosinski. Tracy, will you tell folks who you are, where you are, and what you do? Who I am, where I am. <laughs> I'm here in <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> um, I am a fashion and uh, editorial photographer. Um, I love to utilize color and shape in my work. Um, I love working with people and allowing them to um, kind of be themselves in their environments and capture them um, effectively for, for the client necessarily. Um, and I love finding weird environments and putting people in them. You do so good at that Yeah, too. it's fun. I it love really it. is. Yeah, it works awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I also would like to introduce uh, Mr. Mark Hauser today. He's uh, an amazing photographer, which I think everybody in the world knows. He's the man. He knows, right? Yeah. Everybody knows him. Yeah. Um, he has photographed, uh, you name it, he's done it. Um, he has this amazing black and white portrait style um, that uh, has just been seen all over the world. Um, Mark, it's fun to have you here today. Yes. Hello, hello, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> Welcome to FridayPhotoSchool.com. <laughs> well, you just an example of uh, an image that was cropped, and it works cropped and uncropped. I, I shot it full oh frame. Oh my gosh, look. Here's the full frame. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it still works, cropped. I still like it personally, uncropped, um, but it, it works visually. I mean, it's still, it's not destroying the integrity, my creative integrity right. um, with cropping it. But th that's not true for every image. Um, there are examples, definitely. I mean, if you were to take something like this of Mark's and crop it, mm -hmm. It completely changes. Ruin it. Completely changes the image. It just doesn't. It doesn't work. Totally. Um, so so it can work both ways. But no, I choose to cropping camera. And, and of course, yeah. oh, go ahead, Mark. Well, sometimes when you're working now with this digital camera world, and you get a call and they say they wanted a square picture, I have to pre-visualize inside the camera. And I kind of like narrow my vision down 
and say the right hand side and left hand side, forget about that mark. Yeah, that's hard to do. All you're going to be looking at is that center section. That's what's important. I kind of like lesion off. And if you notice that my photographs are kind of balanced in their own way. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's all about bringing your eye in. What you want to do with a photograph with your composition is you want to bring people into the photograph and lead them out. Mm -hmm. Bring Definitely. them in. And you want your photograph to be powerful enough to get their eye to travel through the photograph. And you want to use, you I want love to this take one. the photograph. I think the light brings you back further into yeah. the frame. Oh, yeah. Outside of, obviously, her expression. Right. And, and then what makes my photographs work is I use, a, people say, ah, oh, where's your 150 and 200 millimeter lens for those <laughs> portraits, right. Mark? That's, a, that's what makes a great portrait. Right. You use those long lenses. I said, well, I like it when you come into somebody and you can talk to them. And when you use a wider lens, it kind of gives them a round shape where you, it looks like they're right there and you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. It m makes the people more approachable. Also, when you're really close to a person with like a 35 or 24, you can reach over and grab them! <laughs> <laughs> and scream at them! Make them jump! Well, Woo! you know, seeing Mark's <laughs> photo sessions are such a gas mm -hmm. because there are times when he has everything all set up and he starts shooting and he really doesn't have a composition he's happy with, but right. he keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Rarely does he change his light. Sometimes he'll move in or move back. I don't think I've ever seen you change lenses in the middle of a photo session. No. In fact, I've got a video clip here of one of the photo sessions, you photographing a, two, a couple, a brother-sister, and you can see how the shot starts and how it ends. Take a quick look at this. Okay, well, you both look down towards that. Get your hair out of your eye a little bit. Now look towards your brother. Okay, now, okay, that's it. Don't move. Look toward me. That's great. Okay, put your hand down. Put your, that's right there. That's great. No, perfect. Now get closer together. Okay, there's this gap between the two of you on the bottom. Okay, here we go.